Welcome back to my channel. I'm Angela, graphic designer and illustrator for everyone who is new here. Um, thank you all for so much support. Uh, you guys are amazing. So glad that you guys are enjoying my content. And today we're in InDesign right here. I have it open. I'm on my laptop today. I'm not on the iPad. InDesign isn't on the iPad. <laughs> We're going to design a fall menu, a fall coffee menu, I will let you know, because if you haven't seen my previous video, I had created some icons and some patterns and such like that for the fall time. And we're going to make a menu design from that. So if you haven't seen that, go check that out first and then come on back here. Let's dive into InDesign. I wanted to showcase something that you may or may not know when you go to uh, place your document, especially if you have not created them as PNGs, if they are still in an Illustrator file or Photoshop file, if you will, you can select your file in the pop-up window and instead of it just showcasing replace selected item, you can also showcase show import options. If you check that box, um, it may be slightly different on a Mac, but if you select that box there, you can click open and then it will showcase this menu box here. Now this menu box shows you each individual item that is in a document that you are placing or importing, if you will. We are going to pull all these items in here instead of just choosing previewed page, which was the first one, we're going to select select all. Right here is the second option. And when you press okay, it'll pull them all in together. Now under layers, you can see all of these layers. They're all there for you, which is why it's important to name your layers, name your layers so that way they uh, show up here nice and neat. Let's press okay. And we're going to get this icon showing up right here. So I'm gonna pull these off to the side place them all. They're probably going to take a minute or two because they were brought over from another program. I'm just popping these up wherever. There we go. I'll select it. And now we have them all here. So I'm going to pull these off to the side here. Let's just zoom out. Oh dear. Bring that one down. Okay. These patterns kind of go off of the workable artboard. We're gonna downsize them. If you hold down control and shift on your keyboard while clicking and dragging in a corner, it will decrease it down proportionally. If you don't do that, it'll just cut it off because within InDesign, I'm just gonna press control C. I'm pretty sure it's command shift as well on a Mac. If you don't press down command or control shift, then it'll just cut it off because what InDesign does is that it has a holding place, like a, a placeholder, if you will, like a bounding box. So the bounding box, which is the blue line that you see here, this blue line that's encasing the pattern, that is your placeholder, your bounding box. It just holds the artwork for you. You can double click into this and the line typically turns orange if you have it set to the default. That will let you know that you are selecting the artwork itself. So you can move it within the bounding box like so. I'm gonna set it back to where it's normal. For our menu, we have a few coffee selections here. It's just very few because it's a fall menu. It's not very big. My menu size is five and a half by eight inches. And that is vertical orientation because it's menu. I do believe in Pika's that is 38 by 44. You can correct me if I'm wrong. We have this company called Roast D. Mm, so nice. Roast D is the coffee company. Let's pull this down into here. Use our link and end page our line toolbar over here to make sure that it is center there's roast d this is going to be page one page one is our master page it's called the parent page in indesign and that is going to be the back so menus have two sides so that one's the back and then page two is going to be the other side that has the list of items and everything else let's make the back of the menu. I'm going to take this pattern in and put it on the back and pull it off the page. It's always good to pull it off the page slightly to the bleed line because the bleed line allows for any offset printing. So when things get printed, sometimes the printer offsets the printing slightly between prints. So it's always good to leave at least an eighth of an inch 
of your artwork bleeding off the page. So that's why it's called the bleed line. I don't have mine showcased here, but it's usually anywhere between an eighth and a quarter inch surrounding the page. Let's see, I want to bring it down in opacity. Go over to the properties panel. If it's not visible for you, it will be under window and then you can select the window that you want to display. It's all in alphabetical order, so it'll be properties. Under opacity, once you have the pattern selected, you can take down the opacity. I'm thinking I'm just gonna do 50. Let's see what that looks like. 50 looks good, I think. We're gonna take our icon, which I created over here. We're gonna bring it up to the first page. It should be showcased on the back of the menu. So this is the fall icon. Make sure that you are grabbing the outside bounding box and not the internal artwork. Hold down shift and control or shift and command if you're on a Mac and click and drag in a corner. If you are looking at your screen and you see it's very um, pixelated, there is a setting change that you can implement in InDesign. I will show you what that is. That will make it to where it displays at a higher quality instead of at a medium to low quality, which is the default in InDesign. I don't know why they set it as the default. I may even want to take this down. Should I do this one instead? Hang on. Just give us some options, you know? There is that one and that one. That almost looks better. All right, let's make this one be here. Let's increase the opacity to about 70% so you can still read it. I don't want it to be too too much pull it off to where it is up to an eighth of an inch off of the page for the bleed you can always go up to view screen mode preview to see how it all looks without all the bounding boxes and lines in your way so that is the back of our menu and then we have the front of our menu i may not use this pattern we'll see 30 percent opacity 30 percent seems like a good one when it comes to the quality settings when you're working in the program, if it looks highly pixelated, there is a setting under Edit and Preferences. If you go to General, it will take you to this pop-up page for preferences. If you're noticing a lot of pixelation in your imported images or your placed images, even if they're from a vector file, this is going to help you to visually see what it's going to look like when it's printed. because. The way that it looks on screen isn't always the way it's going to print. Under display performance, all the way down here on the left, it is the fourth one from the bottom. These values are usually all in the center under raster images, vector graphics, and transparency. I like to pull mine more to high resolution. It does make your processor work a little bit harder in the, on the computer, but when you are visually seeing what you are designing, most designers are visual. When you are looking at the quality of it and it looks pixelated and awful, it can't really present that to a client that way. So you wanna make sure that your display performance visibility is on high performance. So that way it showcases it as it will be printed, which would be in high quality. It will not come up pixelated if you set those settings. So we have our menu looking like this so far, and this is how the front of the menu is looking. The biggest thing is going to be the images. We wanted to have the information read very easily. I'm gonna do a very simple three column grid for the information. My images, which are right over here, I'm gonna pull them into place. There's only very few items here for this coffee shop. There isn't a lot as far as the specialty menu. We'll line these up and just make sure that they are the correct sizes. This pattern is getting quite distracting as I'm designing. Hide it for now by pressing the eye icon in the layers panel. There is our coffee images. Let's bring that pattern back up. I want to take down the opacity of this even more to about 20, just so it doesn't fight so much with the information. Shall we add a more muted color in the background. Maybe that will help us because this does not have a background to it. It is basically like a transparent background. So let's add a color. I did bring in all my color swatches. Let's make this box here. Send that all the way to the back. Oh, that's looking better already. I always check your screen mode to see how it's looking overall because you always want to make sure that things are, yep, lined up properly. Just because it has a bounding box doesn't mean that it will line up exactly how 
you expect it to. When it comes to legibility, it's always good to have a dark font on top of a light background. It is the most easiest to read, especially if people are trying to scan a menu or something very quickly rather than having a light text on a dark background. Now going back to the back of the menu, I do like how this roasty pattern is working. However, let's try something a little bit different. We can make this quite simple as well. By taking a box, going to our swatches, choosing a nice mid-tone color. Let's just draw the box over the top and see. It looks just like that. Let's see what, let's make it a little bit darker. We can do a solid color such as this or have it to where it's just the pattern. I kind of like the simplicity of the color just by itself, but I do prefer the pattern. Let's see if I can't take down the opacity of this and overlay it on top. Yeah, that looks better. Okay. Now it comes to laying out of the information. So we have different coffee styles here. Let's create a text box. I will need to see my normal view. This one's going to be, I believe it was a cinnamon dolce coffee. And I'm gonna hold down Alt, or I believe it's Option on a Mac. You click and hold while holding down Alt or Option, and it does a duplication for you of the text box. Let's set up our layout for all of the text. Drag the text box all the way over. It's not going to be a very long uh, explanation. Let's do another copy of the text box over down to here, and that's going to be our price. I have not chosen what text we are going to use yet. Let's set that now. Here is where you would want to create your character and paragraph styles, so then you can then just click a button and apply it to everything else. So for titles, I would like it to have a paragraph style. In your paragraph styles window, add a paragraph styles. There's a plus sign down here to create a new one. Double tap on that one, paragraph style one. And I'm gonna call this menu names or menu item names, I suppose I could say that. Okay, so basic character formats. I do not want Minion Pro. <laughs> that is not the font that I wanna use. Uh, let's use ice cream is one of my favorites. <laughs> and I just like ice cream. Although there is one in here called Dolce that I found recently. Where did it go? There it is, Dolce. The font style would be black. The size, I'm gonna make it 14. It's a little bit on the big side, but that's okay, it's a name. Character color down here on the left. We have it set to black for now, but we don't want it set to black. It does carry over all of our swatches from our swatches panel over here. So I'm going to choose the dark brown color for our item colors. And I believe that is all I want to do. So I'm going to press OK and it applies it. Oh, look at that. OK, 14 is actually too small. <laughs> let's make it a bit bigger. Basic character formats instead of 14, let's go to 18. These go up in increments of one point. Select OK. I'm going to have to increase my text box. Simon Dolce Coffee. Look at that. So cute. It goes with the logo type as well. And that's looking good so far. So we have the overview of this from the back side of the menu to the front side of the menu. It's very, very fall. <laughs> Here is what the name looks like. And we can pull this down so that way it's more in line with the coffee itself. It doesn't have to be so tall. And the price... The price, I would like to keep it down there, but I think it might be best suited up here with the coffee name. Click on the price, click on menu item name. It, it changes it to the already made paragraph style there. And that's what paragraph styles are for. Paragraph styles are there to make everything a lot easier for yourself. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Price is gonna be the same size as the menu item name, just so that way it's consistent. And then you have a description under that. So let's take what we have made and the font pairing to this is not going to be Minion Pro. That is just the default. Let's change that. Oh, I do love Allegria. Allegria is one of my favorite fonts. These fonts you can get free. I believe these are Google fonts, um, if I'm remembering properly. That is at a 12, 12 point size. If we're looking at a menu, we're holding it. That's a pretty good size. Okay. Your typical standard font size for anything that's legible is anywhere between 11 and 12, sometimes 13, but 13 isn't always used. Keeping it at a base level of 12 is good. Let's take this. 
duplicate this down and we'll do that twice. The second one is not a cinnamon dolce coffee. This one's actually a pumpkin spice iced coffee. If you don't want to have to click and drag and click and drag all the time, there is a keyboard shortcut, but I'm going to show you where it is. Go to object at the top toolbar, fitting and fit frame to content. I have mine set up as a keyboard shortcut of control alt C, but yours is probably different. I have changed mine. That will fit the bounding box, the frame, to the content inside, which in this case is the text. You can do that to everything. And then this last one's gonna be an apple pie latte. Let's look over our entire menu design. When it comes to layout, you want something that's going to be easily readable from left to right, and you wanna make sure that everything is in a sequence that makes sense. We have everything lined up to the coffees themselves. Back of your menu, which is very cute, it's very fall, and it has one of the key menu items on the back. Then when it comes to the menu, we have it all set up with the proper items showcased next to the names with the prices that are very clearly defined, a little bit of a um, description for each of the coffees. When it comes to the layout, you wanna make sure it's easily readable and the spacing is all the same between everything. For the roasty, we can also add another text box up here that says festive fall favorites. And there is our menu design. So that ended up working out very well. Everything is very cohesive. And this is based on a three column grid. You can play around with your layout a bit more. All the items are lined up beautifully. They look visibly like their sizes would portray. And then you have the names which are very legible. It goes back to the logo type roasty. And you also have the prices, which are easily seen. And then there is a, a font pairing there, which is very easily writable. It's a very classic type of font. This is our festive fall favorites menu from Roasty Coffee Company. If you haven't seen the creation of these icons and logo type and all of that, go over and check that video out. It'll be linked in the description box down below. I hope you all enjoyed this video, creating a fun festive fall menu. This will be live on Patreon as well. I'm gonna be doing some fun things over there for this month. Go ahead and check that out and all my social channels because you will see this over there, especially on my Instagram. Go ahead and follow me there if you aren't already and I will see you all in my next video. See you soon, creatives.